Broke my heart. It's tough. Okay, we are live. Good morning, everyone. Full house today. Is she coming back? She's going to do like the 50 yard dash in one second. 15 seconds. Oh my gosh. I was like, what the heck happened to my papers? Like, I pulled them off the copier. And I know. Too. Good morning, Dad. My very first Valentine. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Breathe, breathe, breathe. It was the unlocking the door that was like, ah, oh, <laughs> <to hurry." laughs> Will there be a Cupid sighting? Only if we're lucky, Janelle. <laughs> we tried, we put the word out there. Let's see if it happens. Well, this is the old west. There's probably some bows and arrows running. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the one people are sharing by that donut company? Yes. They deliver. That's why I'm like, we oh, need a Cupid here like this. That, is, that was awesome. <laughs> I would be sending so many. Oh, I know, right? Hey, Mike. Same to you, too. Hi, David. today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. We are live on this Valentine's Day on Z93, Outlaw Country, Monster Media, Yuma.com, and the FTS Automotive Facebook Live feed. Yes, if you do not currently follow us on Facebook Live, we encourage you to do so. It's just a way to get a behind the scenes of what goes on when Z93, Outlaw Country, and Monster Media, Yuma.com all go to commercial break. Jennifer and I stay live the entire hour. Plus, it's a way for you to, if you want to get in on the conversation, say good morning, any birthday shout outs, you can do that all right there from my Facebook live feed. That's right. And I just received a word from one of my fellow classmates from Safford that today Yuma Catholic plays Safford. And if you're in the Yuma area and you want to listen to the game, you can do so at mysouthernaz.com. Correct. And they will feature it there. Yes, and uh, Wanda Yuma Shepherd also says, Good morning, ladies. Could you shout out to my brother Dale Thomas today? It's his birthday and happy Valentine's Day. Lots of Valentine's babies. Yes. We're going to go right into that. We want to thank Firehouse Subs. They are the birthday shout out sponsor and the individuals in the Yuma community that celebrate a birthday each week. As long as you send that in, you're automatically entered to win the prize, which is a medium sub, drink, chips, and a dessert. And we want to recognize those who have birthdays today. Yes. My amazing Aunt Connie Wilhoy is celebrating a birthday. She's my mom's baby sister. Oh, well, happy birthday. Also, Bino Carrasco, he tunes in for the show ever so often, usually towards the end of the show. Mm -hmm. And I think if um, if I would have had a godfather, it would have been him. Oh, okay. I just think at the beginning, him and his uh, ex-wife were very, very active in our lives when we were little. Some of my favorite pictures are with them, just mm -hmm. all around good people. So happy birthday, Bino. And Krista Tillery is celebrating a birthday, too, and you have a few. Yes, I do. Uh, Bobby Gomez, we want to wish you a happy 29th birthday. Um, he is a Valentine's baby, and it says, <laughs> with love from his brothers, sisters, nieces, and nephews. And we actually got two, and I believe this is from, um, this. I, it's a different person, but they have the same message. But his birthday is officially at 10.01. So, right, right after we sign off. Exactly. He's, it says he's a pretty big deal in our family. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy birthday. And then we also have a special birthday for um, shout out for one of our listeners over at the Yuma County Water Users, my friend Alex Pion. We want to wish you a very happy birthday. And then also there's a special birthday wish um, from the Pump and Drill crew over at the Bureau of Reclamation. They want to wish a happy birthday, Jordan Magdaleno, our Valentine's baby All from your right. drill team. <laughs> if you are celebrating a birthday today, we wish you the happiest of birthdays. And remember, get those entries in. If your birthday is this week or you want to wish a family member or a friend a happy birthday, just go to MonsterMediaYuma.com, click on the Today in Yuma tab, and you'll see the little entry form for the Firehouse Subs uh, giveaway yeah and we want to recognize firehouse subs the firehouse public safety foundation has given over 
$1 million to first responders right here in Arizona. And that's the perfect segue into our first segment because we have an early <laughs> guest today. Yes, it, we do. It's a full day. Sergeant Lori Franklin with the Yuma Police Department. Good morning. Thank you for being one of our amazing first responders. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, today we have Lori on. Then it's Wisdom Wednesday with Sarah from the library. Then we will have Jessica Castro from the Saguaro Foundation on and a chance for you to win comedy show tickets coming up to their show on the 24th. And then it's also WTF Wednesday with our very own Anita, who mans the Facebook Live camera. And she has the feature to give away a Bare Naked Soap Co. gift certificate on her page. All that can be found at monstermediayuma.com. Now, Lori, you are here today because we want to talk about and make sure we keep this in the front of people's minds. The Mesa Heights fire that happened recently. Right. It, terrible situation. Families displaced, hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage. And we want to talk about how the community can help. Yeah, January 29th, um, as you can tell, if everybody's seen the video, two, two people jumped the fence. They went into the construction area. They set the building on fire. But that's not all that happened. And I just, I want to keep stressing it to our community. It wasn't just that building that got affected. Exactly. Five other homes were totally destroyed by this fire. And you know, and I've had people ask, well, we put a, we put a map out. If you haven't gone to our Facebook page, YPD put a map out, and I believe Jennifer shared it, and the news has had it. It shows all the damage that was caused by this fire. People don't understand, it was a windy night. And as big and as hot as that fire was, the embers were blowing around. And again, five houses were completely destroyed. Six other, between houses and vehicles, were seriously damaged. Not to mention a bunch of other little hot spots that, that dropped down. Mm -hmm. And I also want to just thank the community because if they weren't on top of it and running out and getting their guarding hoses and dousing all these little embers, it would have been way worse. But the thing is, is that it's a video. You can see two people jump this fence. It was an intentional fire. Mm -hmm. Somebody in this community knows something. You know, it's up to a $10,000 reward, you know, if we make an arrest on your tip. I cannot believe that our community does not want to come forward, mm -hmm. give us the information to get these people off the streets. They didn't just affect that building. They affected people's lives. People were displaced. We were just lucky nobody was seriously hurt or killed. That's right. Some of our firefighters suffered some uh, minor injuries, too, just as a result of being in, in, in that line of work in that situation. But we enlisted the help of the community because out of these families that were displaced, several have babies. Yes. We're talking newborns, and they've lost so much, or their the items in their home suffered major smoke damage, so they might not be usable for some time, especially mattresses and, and things like that. And the community stepped up mm -hmm. in, in full force like they usually do when we reach out and say, is there anything you can do? We still have items here because some are just getting moved into different housing right. now, yeah. but we do still have items. We receive diapers and formula, clothing, uh, baby items, swings, things like that, and then items for other individuals of the family. And some, some people were cleaning out their closets anyway, so we do have a variety of items. If you are one of those families or you know someone, please have them come down here to the station. You know, we, we did put the call out to the community for, you know, all of the different things that these families may need, but now we're putting the call out to the community to say something. Like we said, you know, the, the police department put out this video, and that's why Sergeant Lori Franklin's here today. Somebody knows something. So we need to get the word out there. If you even heard somebody talking about it or some a friend of a friend mentioned this, that they might think it, the, any little tip helps. Exactly. And, and that's that's the thing. I mean, you know, we, we, we had tips from, from the community as far as, well, you know, the fence. Maybe right. there's fingerprints on the fence. And I love our community for doing that. Mm -hmm. um, but I just want to explain so people understand, it was a horrific fire mm -hmm. and it was hot and firefighters came in and the water and everything like that. If you've seen the videos, the, the plastic... Um, the tar, the banners. Those were completely. Bubble. They were completely melted. Yeah. Um, so I mean, we have done that. We have searched for video. Our, you know, our detectives are still nonstop going out, checking out leads that come in, but we need them to keep coming in. Just because you say, "Hey, somebody may have done this," it doesn't mean that they did. But give us a chance to talk to them. Give us a chance to 
to check it out and see if maybe they did. You don't know. Maybe you know something that you're not even really sure of. Mm -hmm. Maybe sometime that morning you saw somebody just lingering around watching it. You know, a lot of arsonists do that. Mm -hmm. But if you, even, even the smallest tip, if you think, please call it in. You can call 78 Crime to remain anonymous or call the uh, police department. Call the fire department if you're more comfortable doing that. We just, we know somebody knows something. Um, if these are your friends, they're not worth protecting. I'm, I'm here to tell you they're not worth protecting. Look at what they've done to these families. Or, uh, again, the what could have happened. Exactly, exactly. And, and I just, you know, we, we need to solve this. We really yeah. do because I don't want these guys to say, oh, well, we got away from it this time. Let's go try something else. We need to get them off the streets. Um, and, and like I said, somebody somebody knows something, so please, please come forward and tell us. Speak up, and hopefully this will be the case where loose lips sink ships and yeah. someone says something, and it, uh, like Lori said, it could be the mi most little minute comment that you think, but it's worth at least having them investigate and check out just because you don't know. And it could be someone could have one piece of the puzzle, someone exactly. else could have another. Absolutely. And, and I love, this is one of those instances where we've, we've talked about the love-hate relationship with social media. And it's great that it's also provided this avenue because a lot of people might not watch TV, especially with some of the current situations going on with, the, <laughs> with local channels. They might right. not have access to that. But the availability on the Internet uh, and the share capability has just changed things so much in our world today and we're hoping someone will recognize people from this. I know there was another situation a few months ago where a security camera at a taco stand was able to mm -hmm. catch a little footage of someone and people right away. Oh, I started getting right. messages. I'm like, okay, contact the police. You, you and, was a small town. You was a small town, and and mm -hmm. everybody knows everyone, everybody. And everyone sees everything. Every, exactly, right. exactly. So we know that there's that the information that we need out there. So let's get it to the proper people so that we can get it resolved because it it was a big deal. Like you said, it affected a lot of families. In, in it, and it did. And I mean, you know, we, we read social media mm -hmm. and some of the other sites out there. You know, you, you see the one where, you know, oh, I'm not going to narc my buddy out. You know, $10,000 isn't worth nar narking my buddy out. If that's the kind of person you want to hang out with, I mean, gosh, just sit back and think about what the devastation was mm -hmm. that was caused. Um, that person's not worth friendship come on no, I mean, you need to reevaluate your circle you of friends. seriously exactly. need to reevaluate so again if you even the smallest tip even if you think well maybe it doesn't mean anything call us let us check it out we really need to get this we need to get it solved do you um do you think that they should call uh, 78 crime or should they call the, the police department directly like you, non emergency uh, again call the police department if you want to remain anonymous call 78 crime it is truly anonymous. It, it, like, let me reiterate to you if you want to be anonymous. It's a phone line that comes into the police department. It is not uh, recorded. It doesn't come up with a caller ID. So we have no idea who you are. You'll be given a four-digit number um, by the person that answers the phone. They will take your tip. They're going to give you that number. And if you see that an arrest has been made, call the police department back. They're going to say, well, it's going to come to me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, what is your four-digit number? You're going to give it to me if an arrest has been made. I, I put it in front of the 78 Crime Board, and you know if a if a reward's given, then I will let you know when you call me back again because I have no way to, to contact these people. That's how anonymous this is. Um, so if you truly need to remain anonymous, use that tip line. Otherwise, call our non-emergency number at dispatch. Call the fire department. Call call somebody to get us the word. All right, now, Sergeant Franklin, I also hear that the Yuma Police Department just received a couple grants. Oh, we did. <laughs> uh, I love the, I love the, the This is because changer. I'm so excited yes. about this. Um, we put in for a grant to assist with uh, teen driving awareness through uh, State Farm, and I was awarded $10,000 for, for this grant to go out and purchase. And we were going to purchase, uh, they're called Drunk Buster Goggles mm -hmm. and Pedal Carts. And so these drunk buster goggles range from like slightly drunk to massively intoxicated to being under the influence of marijuana to, to other drugs. Um, so we were awarded a grant and we're going to get a couple sets of six of these drunk buster goggles and then two sets of three of the pedal carts um, to get trailers and everything. So we will be taking them to the high schools, um, like the gain event, any other big events that we have. 
to allow the teens to see this is what it's going to look like if you're under the influence and you're going to drive because we have to hit the younger we have to mm -hmm. hit the younger kids these are the ones that are going to grow up hopefully understanding that this is your sight of you when you're driving. This is how people get in accidents, seriously injured, or killed. Mm -hmm. And so many accidents lately, and I know a big part of it is that we just have a lot of additional traffic on the road. February is one of our busiest it, months in the human you area. You know, it is busier than, uh, I, 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 it's worse than last year. Yes. And, you know, people say, I mean, all the rumors, I don't know whether they're true, you know, because of the hurricanes in, in Texas. And the hurricanes in Florida are kind of driving them our way. Is that additional winter visitors we're right. referring to then? Right. I mean, 16th Street is just just it is. incredible. It's and, crazy. And the foothills. I was I was at the Fries and Foothills um, on Saturday. You couldn't move in there. Oh wow. Butter was 99 cents. Wow. <laughs> so, um, but a bump. I'm telling you, I just you know these sales they got to stop. <laughs> but. But yeah, the, the the traffic is it's uh, it's 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 pretty thick out there. So please patience. Yeah, patience. patience. What what's cool about those of us year rounders too is, and we don't want to give away all of our secret side streets, but um, it's probably best <laughs> that you utilize those if you know yes. them yes. and <laughs> avoid some of the more heavy heavily congested areas. Exactly. Avenue B's been crazy. Sixteenth Street, Fourth Avenue. You know, I haven't noticed as much chaos on Fourth Avenue, but Twenty Fourth Street. I avoid that like the plague if I can. It's, it's the east and west streets. Yes. The east and west streets are, are getting hammered. 24th Street, 16th Street. Don't um, ask me to bring something home where I have to yeah. take 32nd Street home in the afternoon right now because I get off at 3.30. That puts me home when some might be heading home from afternoon golf. <laughs> And um, I'm going to be one of my next news stories. So I'm, I'm going to try and stick to the interstate or uh, County 14 if I'm able to do right. so. But, but have patience. Have patience. Yes. And, and we all get frustrated. And, you know, if you, if you have to have that potty mouth, have your windows shut. You can potty mouth all you want to. <laughs> exactly. But, but don't, don't do it outside your vehicle. No, you no. Know, don't be rude to other drivers. Everybody's trying to go somewhere. Everybody is in a hurry. But try to leave early. Use your patience. Deep breaths. Slow, Deep slow breaths, down a bit. And, you know, you're going to get there. Well, um, Teresa and I did our roundabout tutorial, and Anita's husband got hit in a roundabout the other day. The uh, same one we did one of the tutorials yes, on. Yes, the, the one off GIS. And, yeah, people, educate yourselves on how to utilize it. Please, please. When, please, when, when please. When you understand how to work it, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty good thing. It is. It really is. It's when it's utilized appropriately, it's amazing how traffic flow can be improved with it. But so many people don't understand the process of what, what does yield mean. Yield doesn't mean just slow down. Right. And, and that's a truly a concept that we're seeing within our drivers is just, I just need to slow down. No, no, no. If, there are, if there's traffic in the, in the roundabout, you actually have to stop. Yes. And, and that means that all four of your tires have ceased all motion, yes. <laughs> not, not just a, a slow roll. Exactly. Right, Sergeant Franklin, because we're bouncing around here, Lizette is asking if there are any updates on the Castle Park fire. Because people are speculating it's the same no, person. We, we don't have right. that information. Um, I'm going to I'm going to say that uh it's 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 been a long going investigation. Um they're trying to to wrap things up with it to send it to the county attorney. So it's uh it's still ongoing um but again it's getting all the pieces together and everything together so the county attorney can look at it and um decide for themselves if we and, have enough. And and again, you know, a little tip, little things that you may not think mm -hmm. is anything may be that piece that they need to convict that person. And and it's it's nice to know that it's still ongoing, but it's been a while so people start to talk. That's why yeah. that's why we want to, we want to keep Mesa Hyde exactly. in the forefront too. And and that and that is huge and that's that's why I, I reached out to you yesterday and and so we can continue to talk about this. It, yeah. it needs to stay on the forefront. Um, it, it's it. It's not just an empty building that burnt, and I can't mm -hmm. stress that enough. That's the part that bothers me the most. It's not just an empty building that was burned. That's S twelve families that, families that have been waiting. waiting. Just in the apartments themselves is twelve families, and right. not to mention all the others. In the but area. not to, not to mention that these people that have lived in that neighborhood for a long time, established houses. That was that's where they live now. All those memories, photographs, yeah. and, and things that they grew up with, it's all gone because of a senseless act of two two individuals, and it breaks my heart. And I guess if if you got something good to look at, the neighborhood did step up and mm -hmm. contained it so it didn't 
it didn't get any worse. That's the blessing there. They were vigilant. It, it, and that's part of our community that is like that. I mean, when, when we need them, they, they step up, they come together. Um, but I don't think we need to prove it that direction. No, no certainly you know, not. It, just, it was senseless. It was senseless and, you know, don't protect the person who's done this. Yeah. Do not protect them. Because if they're going to do something like this, believe me, they're not going to have your back when you want it. No, they exactly. won't. All right. Our guest today, Sergeant Lori Franklin with the Yuma Police Department. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me of on. Course. Anytime. You're welcome. Anytime. Today in Yuma is brought to you by Classic Accounting. Make your appointment to get your 2017 taxes done at their Yuma or Foothills location. Call 343-1040 to schedule your appointment today. And Sprague Sports, visit their partner location, Truckmates, Yuma's home for snug, snug top shells and lids, Linex spray-in bed liners, and 3M window tinting. They're located right next to Sprague's on 32nd Street, next to Lowe's. And quick refrigeration. They are another amazing family-owned and operated business, and they've been heating and cooling in the Yuma area since 1955. Visit GetCoolQuick.com. And Advocate Pest and Wildlife Services offers wildlife control like feral cat trapping, snake and skunk relocation, and pigeon extraction. You can give them a call at 928-343-9149, message them on Facebook, Instagram, and like them on Snapchat. It's time for our Lotus Day Spa and Salon Selfie with Sergeant Franklin in the courtyard. We'll be back with Sarah Wisdom after the break. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. You are welcome. Laura is at jury duty, I think, with Janice. <gasps> really? <laughs> it might be a murder trial. Oh, dear Lord. Do we have one? I don't know. When, um... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what all the trials are. Doesn't mean I know what one is. Are you stuck right there? I'm <laughs> losing things. Oh. Well, thank you. you face that way. Right over here in the middle. Well, we don't have any snow today. It's just habit now. Smile. Right? Thank you very much. Anytime. We shall see you soon. Freaking robbery at this bus cargo. That cracked me. Remember, you're on Facebook Live. It was fun. There was no cussing. It's okay. It's okay. There's no cussing. I did not. I did not. See you guys. Bye. The armchair. Yeah. <laughs> We're coming out. Cool, cool. All right. <laughs> Gracias. Okay. Okay. Teresa is Fig's Valentine because she bought him food yesterday. Oh. <laughs> he was hungry. I think we better feed him. Yeah. Oh, you have to show my card. Oh. This is from Teresa's mom. You have to pull the little thing too. How, which one do you pull? Right here. Oh. Dang it, I can't get up under there. <laughs> she said it was for the family, but I really think it was for the radio family. <laughs> it's awesome. Thank you. It is absolutely awesome. I thought so too. <laughs> Am I hearing things? Yeah. <laughs> um, they're not on my schedule. I don't know, but I haven't seen the other person on the schedule either, so that might work out. <laughs> <laughs> She's coming. Yes, yes. Yeah. April confirmed this morning. Oh, did she? Okay. So, Anita, you might be bounced to tomorrow. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, I'm I'm we'll flexible. <laughs> I warmed up the seat in the corner. You can have it. We do. We love you. But it's an hour. <laughs> Just delicious. <laughs> I'm a little. He goes, Murder, That's not yummy at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't let the fire cases go cold. Oh, but I um, have to stop. Like. <laughs> And try to hold my hand still as I'm giggling on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask, since they've put in the roundabouts, if they've seen an increase in accidents in those areas. You know what? I frequent those. That is my way to get to the mall because I don't like 16th Street. And I have to say, that wreck was the first one that I had seen. And... um 
Although I get scared because people don't yield. I'm like, yeah, hey, I, 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 I drive because... more defensively coming up on it. But yes. especially if someone's exiting on the eight. Well, exactly. Saturday, there was a really bad accident <sighs> on that roundabout. Right. Okay, everybody run again. Yeah. Welcome back to Today and You, my Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. It's Wisdom Wednesday. Yay. Hi, Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah Wisdom is with us from the Yuma County Library District. District, And today we're going to talk about finances, adult winter reading, and art and poetry. Yeah, just a little bit of everything. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, coming up tomorrow at our Summerton Library, um, our business librarian is traveling down there to talk about saving on a restrictive budget. That's happening at 4 p.m. at Summerton. And um, I think this is a really interesting perspective on finances and savings because we talk a lot about make a budget and make sure you put money into savings. But what if you're already living paycheck to paycheck mm -hmm. and you just feel like there is no way, there's there's no wiggle room in there for, for savings accounts? So, so Andrew is going to give some tips about how to create that savings account on a restrictive budget, which which a lot of us live on. It, it, you're very you're very right. You know, the, we were Danita and I were talking about this um, uh, uh, last week or so. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the day, people used to be able to live and provide for a family off of one person income. Uh, you know, usually it was the husband that went out, the wife took to take care of the home and the kids, and, and still was able to live comfortably. Well, now, even with a two-person, or even, you know, if you have a teen, a three-person household that has a work, working, three, three people working in the household, mm -hmm. it's, it's really not you're not able to do that anymore. Right. It's tight. So, so saving is kind of, you know, put on the back burner. Exactly. It's case. a nice idea. <laughs> but <laughs> and I think, too, from days gone by, people knew how to live within their means a little bit better. That could be. That, that could be because people, uh, maybe it was closer to, like, the Great Depression right, where people right. learned how to make do. And, and yeah, we've kind and of gotten away from yeah, that. We're, 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 we're separated from that a little mm -hmm. bit. But uh, people didn't need Internet or cell phones right. or, you know, but I know everything was comparable as far as the economy at the time, too. So it's not like cars are any more expensive now or homes. Right, right. But I, I think it's a great opportunity, and that's tomorrow at the Summerton Library. Yes, happening at 4 p.m. There's no charge to attend. So there's your first tip. <laughs> <laughs> it's a free event. <laughs> and hopefully we can share some tips with you about how to get that savings account started. All right. Now, winter reading. Yes, we are about two weeks away from the end of our winter reading program. The theme this year has been Feed Your Brain, Read, so it's had a cooking, recipe, culinary theme, and uh, a, an extra, a way to get an extra entry in for the, uh, the grand prize, which is an edible arrangements fruit basket, mm. is to attend a book tasting. No, we're not going to be licking the books or anything. <laughs> that would be gross. <laughs> we're actually inviting people to bring a book that they love and give it a little talk up. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be in a, in a group of people and you're going to have a minute or two to talk about a book that you love, why you loved it, why you think other people would enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, and so really just sort of a, a grassroots kind of book club going on. You get a chance to meet other readers, hear about what they like to read, and hopefully you guys will be able to to uh, exchange some some tips and some good titles to read. Um, that is happening this Friday the 16th at the Heritage Library at 11 a.m. Again, there's no charge to attend, no registration necessary. Just bring a book you love and be ready to talk about it. All right, now, art and poetry. Yes, this is a big event, grows bigger every year, that our Foothills Library puts on. This year is the third annual art and poetry exhibition. It's taking place Friday and Saturday at the Foothills Library. And we invite local artists and poets to inspire each other. Mm -hmm. So in, in years past, um, we've had a, a poem, uh, a poem, Poets write poems, and then an artist would choose a poem and create a piece of art oh, that they that illustrated. Yes, to in, that that they were inspired by this poem, and so they create something to illustrate it. This year, the art was actually created first, and our poets looked at the art awesome. and wrote a poem based on what they sort of interpreted from That's the piece cool. of art. So it's very interesting and some really terrific connections are made. Um, the artwork and the poetry will be on display Friday and Saturday. Um, it starts at 11 a.m. Friday. 
And uh, the community also gets to be part of this. You get to vote on your favorite collaboration. Oh, fun. So, so we need the community as well to participate in this and tell us which piece, which pieces you like the best. And uh, they always put together a really nice booklet of all the pieces. And uh, this year we actually have a web page that has a gallery from... Uh, years past that shows yeah. the artwork and the poetry. So um, this event just continues to grow and we're really happy to support our local artists and poets. And it's this Friday and Saturday at the Foothills Library. That's right. Alright, if you'd like to check out all the events the library has going on or just find out more information, plus have access to their e-resources, you can go to yumalibrary.org. That's right. All right, our guest today, Sarah Wisdom. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's time for our Lotus Day Sponsor on Selfie with Sarah out in the courtyard. We'll be back. We have more coming up today. Yes. Plus your chance to win comedy show tickets on today in Yuma on Z93, Outlaw Country, and monstermediayuma.com. The show is brought to you by Classic Accounting. They have 30 years of experience and knowledge to benefit you. They have two locations to serve you in Yuma and in the foothills. Call to schedule your appointment today, 343-1040. And Sprague Sports, check out the High Point 9mm pistol cell going on now. It's 100% American made and comes with a lifetime warranty, plus a free range pass with purchase. You can find them on 32nd Street next to Lowe's. And we're halfway to Free Filter Friday. Quick refrigeration. Just taking your old air filter on Friday to 190 West 10th Street, and they will give you a brand new standard 1-inch air filter. Again, that's 190 West 10th Street. And Huma's Best. Advocate Pest and Wildlife Services have been providing pest control services in the Yuma area for over 20 years. They're licensed with the Arizona, Arizona Game and Fish Department for safe, humane wildlife re relocation. You can give them a call at 928-343-9149. Message them on Facebook, Instagram, or Snapchat. And Sarah Little says, roses are red, rhyming is hard, um, potato. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I will paint a picture that will be as good as that poem. <laughs> We'll be back after this. <laughs> <laughs> That's about my level of artistic talent. My kind of poetry. Oh, that was All great. Right. <laughs> This doesn't happen very often. I'm in the studio alone. How are you? You can have a seat right there at that um, first chair right there. Brianna's going to come in after her. Okay. So you want to do WTF Thursday? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan. The T can stand for Thursday. <laughs> See? Little remembers. <laughs> WTF. What? <laughs> <laughs> My boys still have a hard time swallowing that. <laughs> Thought the rapture had to happen for a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You ready? I am. You're going to pull the mic a little closer, closer to, you. to you. The whole thing. There you go. Is that close enough? Yeah. That's good. Should be. I said if a keyword also. Oh, did you? Oh, for okay. Saguaro? Yes. But it's not Saguaro because uh, I knew people might not be able to spell that. I have a hard time spelling Saguaro. <laughs> I have to think about it. The keyword is comedy. Just Ooh. so you know right now. <laughs> Facebook Live gets a little um, sneak peek, sneak peek, and get on the game before the regular oh, listeners okay. do. So is that the text and yeah, yeah you just to be, text uh -huh. that to our our three four three zero nine nine three, and they'll get a bounce back that tells them what they've okay. entered for and the value. Okay, yeah. there you go. That's your spot. Right. Jennifer Black on photography. Well, next <laughs> in eight <laughs> seconds because there's a delay. <laughs> I think that's something my I can get my husband into. What's that? The comedy. comedy. Oh, yeah. They always do a great job. Funny. He's funny. If I could get him to stay up past 7.30. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Here we 
Gabe. Yes, we already did the birthday shout outs, Gabe, at the beginning of the show. Ready? Welcome back to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. It is Valentine's Day and also Arizona's birthday. She turns 106 years old today. Wow. Arizona was established in 1912. Well, happy birthday, Arizona. That's right. She's looking pretty good for being over 100 years old. <laughs> our, our next guest with us in the studio is Jessica Castro from the Saguaro Foundation. Thanks for coming in, Jessica. Hello. Good morning. Now, we are going to talk comedy because there's a big comedy show coming up on the 24th. There is, and it's going to be a good night, so don't miss it. Now, give us a little sneak peek on what they can be expecting um, for this comedy. Who are the comedians coming into town? So we have Paul Rodriguez, Manny Maldonado, Renee Garcia. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of giveaways, a lot of raffles, concessions. Um, we are going to have a lot of people coming out. A uh -huh. lot of, we have a lot of sponsors, so it should be a, a good day. A good day. Now, you mentioned um, some... Um, raffles and things that you have going on right now you have one going on that they can actually get tickets for right now at the Saguaro Foundation office correct yes correct and that is for a it's for a grill set a barbecue grill yeah, uh -huh. a barbecue grill set and then we also have another one um it's going to be a tv I'm not exactly sure Ooh. what size so now um for somebody who may not be familiar with Saguaro Foundation kind of give them a little bit of background on what you guys do so, so our foundation provides services to developmentally disabled, uh, the behavioral health community, elderly. Um, we do have transportation services. Uh, we have home community based. There's a lot of services we provide, but still a lot that we don't have that we see that Yuma County needs. Mm -hmm. And so that's what these, with the comedy show and all these different get, raffles and things that you're doing, are the money is going towards is going towards helping you guys grow the World Foundation and to to accommodate the needs of, of the Yuma area. Yes, ma'am. All right, how can people get tickets for the show? So we sell them at YumaShowTickets.com. Mm -hmm. um, so World Foundation, the Civic Center, the Art, the what is it, the Art Center? Uh huh. The Art Center. Um, so they are general admission twenty five, premium thirty five, and VIP forty five. And now the show again is coming up on February 24th and you can get tickets all the way up to the day of the event. Um, you can also find a link if you go to monstermediayuma.com on the homepage we have the flyer for the actual event. If you click there it will take you to Yuma Show Tickets and then all you need to do is click on Saguaro Foundation's Comedy Night. Again, you know, Paul Rodriguez has been um, to the to the Yuma area a couple of times, so you know that you're guaranteed a good show when he comes in. Oh, he, he puts on a great show. <laughs> yes, definitely. And you have two other ones, Manny Maldonado and Renee Garcia, correct? Yes. I don't think I've heard of them, but I'm not I'm not familiar with the comedy circuit either. So <laughs> it's definitely going to be a lot of fun. Again, you can get your tickets at the Saguaro Foundation office. What is your address there? 1495 South 4th Avenue. And it's right on the corner, right as you pass Center Point. Um, you can find it right there. And a phone number if they have any questions. 920-0360. And do we have a ticket giveaway? We do. We are doing a giveaway on the text line again today, and we've set up an easy keyword. Okay. All you need to do is text the keyword COMEDY, C-O-M-E-D-Y, to the number 928-343-0993. And remember, you can text as often as you like, but please text responsibly. Mm -hmm. Standard text rates do apply, so you might want to check your, your provider plan. And... No emojis or exclamation points. They're very popular. Exactly. And no signatures because unless you just have the word comedy, you're not going to get the bounce back that lets you know that you were uh, entered correctly. Mm -hmm. So start doing those uh, texts right now if you're able to do so safely. No texting <laughs> and driving and or pull off to the side of the road to get your entries in. We will give you until noon today and then we'll take all the entries and select one winner at random. And you will win a pair of tickets valued at $50. You do have to be at least 18 to win. For complete rules, you can go to our website at monstermediayuma.com. Yes, again, and we will, we do have a few more giveaways that we will be doing um, next week leading up to the actual event. But again, get your tickets now. Again, tell them again where they can find the tickets at, Jessica. YumaShowTickets.com, the Yuma Civic Center, and Saguaro Foundation. Again, $25, $35 for VIP, it is $50. $45. $45. Okay. And the doors do open at 6, and the mm -hmm. show starts at what time again? At 8. Okay, so you have a little time to get in, mix and mingle. And it's one of those events where you see people that you don't see on a regular basis, but it's fun to hang out. Yeah. 
And and this is something you want, you know, Sora wants, Foundation wants to do every year to grow. You know, and if, if they, we get a good turnout, you're looking at some other really awesome comedians to come into town. So we definitely want to make it a great night. And you know what? Support Saguaro Foundation at the same time because they do a lot. They do a lot of good for the community. And and if they can, we can help them grow their business and and helping um, all of our people in the community. Then that's what we want to do. And what's funny about the show too, with Paul having been to Yuma numerous times he, over the he last has twenty some years, good jokes. He, he's more familiar with the community and the yes. desert Southwest. So a lot of the stuff's a little bit more personalized too. I went to one of the shows probably 15 years ago mm -hmm. and it was really good he's really funny so i'm looking forward to it i think we're all going to try and go also mm -hmm. it's good all right again if anyone has any questions about the show or any of the services that saguaro provides jessica how can they contact you so they can contact the saguaro office and ask for more information at 7836069 all right, sounds good. All right, and the show is coming up again on February 24th. That's a Saturday, and doors open at 6 in the show. Now, the show, the tickets say 7 o'clock, Jessica. So it's the That's meet the and greet. beginning? Uh, the meet and greet for VIP is 7 o'clock, but okay. the show starts at 8. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. All right, well, it's going to be a good time. All right, thank you so much for coming in. You know what we have to do now? We have to take our Lotus Day Spawn Spawn <laughs> selfie. My camera's oh, getting a workout okay. today. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Our guest today, Jessica Castro with the Saguaro Foundation. Get your tickets, and we will see you at the comedy show. This is Today in Yuma on Z93 Outlaw Country, MonsterMediaYuma.com. We will come back with Adriana Del Rio from Sunset Community Health Center because they have some stuff coming up. Don't forget, it's Valentine's Day, and I also have a couple safety tips to share with you when we return. Sounds good. Be careful in the roundabout. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a fan of the roundabout either. We love you. Be careful. Okay. April Hein Cornish says... She April from the oh, office. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have and your tickets? I know someone to sell you. She goes, Jessica, uh, are you April? She goes, Jessica's <laughs> at the gate, but she's locked out. I will have her try the other gate. Was it? A, it was unlocked, right? Yeah. Okay. It was unlocked. <laughs> All right, let's get right over here, Jessica. I don't know which way you were going. <laughs> there you go. All right. All right. Thank we will you. see you in about a week and a half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right around the corner. Thank you. Take Thank care. You. Have, have a great later. day. Bye, Happy April. Valentine's Day. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was saying. We were we were out of town. We were out of town, and then it's like we have stuff coming up. It's like no, nah, yeah, stay home. And then the weather is like I people know. are saying. Ooh, well, I really checked out the rainy. the wet, uh -huh, the weather, and we're supposed to be getting rain. So it's mm -hmm. like primarily this this morning a little bit. Right. We'll see. Did you guys get anything? Nothing yeah, yet. Not yet. Mm -mm. Oh, Most okay. likely around 11 a.m. Uh -huh. Let me check by Oh, hour. are you giving us an hour now? I love when she gives us an hour. <laughs> why? Because I make her always, stick to it. Yeah. <laughs> we open the door and uh -huh. it. That's why. I know. I had a, a birthday party on Sunday for my daughter and... Um, you know how it was really windy? Yes. Oh, it was really windy. And I'm like, oh my god. It's uh, like the your only is your daughter's birthday on, was it on Sunday? No, it was in January. Is she uh, one? She's yeah, one she now. Okay. Oh my uh -huh. goodness! I know, and um, and my husband was like, "Oh, at ten, we're, like everything's supposed to be nice," and I'm yeah. like, "Dude, it's one, and we still have this wind." Yeah, <laughs> we have a fifty-one percent chance of showers at ten a.m. today, and then Ooh. that will diminish a little bit. But then <laughs> return, return <laughs> yeah, this <it's> afternoon. <laughs> return this afternoon around four o'clock, so we'll have some. They have about showers. Uh, twenty-seven minutes or. 17 minutes. Get to. your windshield wipers changed within that short amount of time. Yeah. That's funny. Jennifer? I don't know about 10 o'clock one. 11, wait, 11 o'clock. Did I say 10? You said 10. I mean 11. Oh, <laughs> hang on. Okay. The Am other, I? the uh, the, uh, the Mountain Standard Time. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the same time zone right now, though. Pacific. <laughs> She's trying to help you out, Jennifer. Okay. Oh. <laughs> no, showers at 10. 10, not 11. 
That's what I my app says. I better fill us mm-hmm. at least like the dew point. The, yeah. You want to get spit on? Yeah, the dew point's get spit on. 44 and the humidity is 53%. You can feel the humidity. Yeah. But at least at our current mm-hmm. temperature, it's not as bad as August. This no. is true. It's 58 degrees and the real fill is 59 because the clouds are warming things up a little bit, trapping in that, that heat. There you go. The winds are six miles an hour if anyone cares. It's always warmer when it's when there's a cloud cover. Yep. As far as natural air temperatures. Mm-hmm. All right, are you ready? Yep. Welcome back to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. We are here live on Z93 Outlaw Country Monster Media, Yuma.com, and the FTF, FTS Automotive Facebook live feed. Our next guest with us, I told you we had a lot going on today. <laughs> uh, Anita will come in tomorrow and share her information and pick our winner for the Bare Naked Soap so Co. giveaway. Ooh, so you have, so you have, you have one, one more day. day. That's our Valentine gift to you. <laughs> there you go. Our next guest is Adriana Del Rio from Sunset Community Health Center. And today we are going to talk about the Little Heroes Health Fair. Hello, good Hello, morning, welcome everyone. Welcome back. Yes, happy Valentine's to everyone. Um, yeah, we're going to be talking about the Little Heroes Health Fair event. This is going to be the first time, the first year we are trying to do this type of event. So we are, our main focus are kids. Yes. You know, um, we want to try and um, get kids to come to the event, families, of course, but um, everything's going to be re- revolved around kids. Um, it's going to be a fun event. We're going to be having arts and crafts. We're going to be having an obstacle challenge. So we want to make it really, really fun. Hopefully, you know, we get a good turnout. Um, and we're looking forward to this. Now, this will be at Immaculate Conception Church. Is that right next door to Sunset Community or in the same area? Yes, it's right next door to our uh, North uh, Clinic. The reason why we did it there is because initially we were hoping we were able to do it in our parking lot. But, uh, you know, as you guys can see, if you there's guys have drawn that <laughs> Avenue B, there's still construction. It's very, you know, confusing. Mm-hmm. I was just there yesterday and I'm like, oh, I was overwhelmed. I mean, I can see how patients, you know, feel when they're there. We're open. You know, we do have, you know, different ways that you can get into the clinic, but it's a little bit of a challenge for that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be doing it at the parking lot at Immaculate Conception Church. Um, It's going to be at the parking lot. We're going to be having our mobile. It's going to be outside. Hopefully we have nice weather. Um, So, um, you know, come and join us. Now, is this going to be like your other health fairs that you have going on where you can get your screenings done and all that kind of stuff? Yes. Um, we're going to be doing it similar to what the other fairs are like. Okay. Um, like I said, this is going to be focused on kids, so we're going to be trying and doing it a little bit more interactive, more fun. We're going to be um, having slime, an Ooh. activity table where we're going to be doing slime with the kids. You know, slime right now, it's, you know there yeah it's, it's all over the place it's trendy. <laughs> yes, it's trendy so we're gonna be doing that hopefully you know everything goes smooth and we don't get kids to start you know you know i, I think it, it'll be fine uh, i actually took my son to a slime making class at one of the local craft stores mm-hmm. and it was very controlled it, and it, and slime is fun you know even for the, uh, an adult my son had always wanted to make it and never really got the stuff so I'm thinking oh my goodness this is just going to be a mess yes after that we went home and we made slime for each other it's it's really not that bad so right it'll be fun. um so we're going to be doing that like i said we're going to be having an obstacle challenge where we're going to be you know divide kids into different groups mm-hmm. and have that um, and then w- one of the important things and nice things about that we're going to be having during this event that we haven't had in the past is we're going to actually be having a pediatrician during oh, the nice. event. Is that Dr. Vega? Yeah, Dr. Vega. He's going to be there during the event. And basically, he's people are going to have the opportunity to come to the event and actually sit one-on-one with the doctor and ask them any questions that they might have, any concerns. Um, you know, it's going to be pretty laid back. So it's not going to be, you know, people don't have to feel like, oh, my God, like that's a doctor, you know, like it's we're going to try and do it really laid back for any questions, any concerns, anything that parents have about their specifically, we know, related to their uh, children. You know, we're going to have Dr. Vega there to answer any questions. And what I like about the roundtable type situation is, you know what, there aren't any questions Mm -hmm. you should be afraid to ask. We've sit here. We've sat here at the station because you have four moms (laughs) and I think 10. 
10 children between the four of us. <laughs> and we have all had those moments where I called the doctor's office when my son was about two weeks old. And I will not share why I called them, <laughs> but they all laughed hysterically here. <laughs> and there, it's just little things like that, that especially as first time parents, or it's just maybe you have a two or three year old, but you haven't encountered some of these situations right. regarding health. And it's the perfect environment to speak up and ask those questions. Right. And then, like you said, there's no wrong question. Um, I don't know. I think we've all had those moments where we have to, where we have our appointment. And then by the time, you know, the doctor says any questions, sometimes you have a doubt, and yeah. but you're afraid to ask it. I don't know why we have that kind of like stigma or like mm -hmm. we don't, we don't ask, um, but we should. So, you know, this would be the perfect opportunity for parents to come and join us. We're going to be having Dr. Vega. And of course, uh, you know, like in the past, our free health screenings, we're going to be doing our glucose, glucose, cholesterol, um, you know, blood pressure, just to mention a few of them. Um, so yeah, I mean, hopefully we get all the families and kids to join us. It's going to be on a Saturday, so it's going to be nice. And like you said, you said the word free. Everything that you guys are doing on Saturday, March 10th at this Little Heroes Health Fair is free. So you get access to a doctor for free. Now he's not going to be treating you, but he will be able to answer any questions that you may, may have. And, yes. and like Adriana said too, the thing, sometimes we often forget or we just yeah. get overwhelmed at the appointments or we have a lot of questions. Write them down. Stick it in your purse. Stick it in your wallet. Take mm -hmm. it with you so you have that list of questions and you don't forget anything. Right. Um, another thing that we are trying to encourage is, this, you know, kids like to dress up. Yes. So if they want to bring their cape, their, you know, superheroes costumes, they're more than welcome to. Again, it's for our little heroes of our house, you know, it's a Little Heroes Health Fair, so that's a theme that we're trying to get out there because they are superheroes, you know? <laughs> yes, they They're, are. They do everything and, you know, they have all this energy all the time. Um, so, you know, we're, we're doing this event for all the little ones. And if people have any questions, they can always give Sunset Community Health Center a call at 373-5717. You guys are pretty active on social media. You're on, you have YouTube information, you're on Facebook, Twitter, and also LinkedIn if people have any questions yeah. there. Sounds good. Again, that Little Heroes Health Fair, Saturday, March 10th at the Immaculate Conception Church parking lot. And that address is 505 South Avenue B right here in Yuma. And the, the health fair goes on from 8 to 11 a.m. And can the parents dress up if they want? They want. If they want to, <laughs> go for it, you know. There you go, little. Now you have your answer. <laughs> All right, that is coming up on Saturday, March 10th. And like we've said, this time of year, spring is such a busy time of year for the Yuma community. A lot of wonderful events going on. Mm -hmm. Get this on your calendar now so you make sure to head on over there with your little ones. And, you know, the obstacle challenge sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, we're going to be having those jumping sacks. We're going to be having hulas. Um, and then, uh, what do you call it in English? It's in Spanish, we do the bebe leche. No? Um, it's, you know, when you jump and then you... Like an so, obstacle um, course. Hot, yeah. hot, hot scotch. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay. yes. I'm like, I know they've said it at the clinic, and I'm like, I just can't get it through. I mean, it's just I grew up calling it bebe leche. That's what we call it in Spanish. Um, but yeah, we're going to be doing that too. <laughs> Sounds good. All Sounds right. Good. Well, our guest with us today, Adriana Del Rio from Sunset Community Health Center. We'll take our Lotus Day Spawn Salon selfie when we're all done here. But it is Valentine's Day, and I mentioned that we have some safety tips to share. Yes, and I'm glad that you brought it up because it, sometimes people forget about these things. They do. And if you're celebrating Valentine's with Mylar or the Metallic Balloons, a lot of people like to release them. Maybe you have a loved one and it's your way of remembering them, mm -hmm. paying tribute to them, but it's we really want to discourage you from letting them go because they can get caught in power lines. And when those metallic balloons touch a power line or float into a substation, it can cause a surge of electricity that short circuits equipment and can lead to power outage. We've seen that happen right mm -hmm. here in the Yuma community yes. and it could cause fires and even injuries to those in the area. And in the course of the of one year, it wouldn't be surprising to find that metallic balloons that come in contact with overhead power lines or that substation equipment cause outages that affect hundreds or thousands of electric consumers. And imagine how upset people get in the Yuma community when mm -hmm. it's 115 degrees in August and they find that it was a balloon that was tangled in a power line that caused them to be without power for three hours. Exactly. They're, they're a little upset and they might want to come after you. <laughs> now, keep in mind... 
keep balloons tethered at all times and attach them to a weight. Mm -hmm. And when no longer in, in use, puncture it and deflate the balloons before you dispose of them. And if a balloon or another toy becomes caught in an overhead power line, don't attempt to retrieve it. This would fall in line with a kite or something exactly. else. Call your um, APS, local APS office for assistance. And you should always, always assume that power lines are live. This comes into play because we do have some weather that might be coming down the road mm -hmm. today and tomorrow, possibility of showers and some winds to keep you and yourself safe. Stay at least 10 feet away from power lines. And again, some people say, but it's a cable line or it's a phone line. Unless you're a professional, you cannot make that determination. Exactly. Treat any downed line as if it were a power line. You know, and you mentioned those balloons, you know, not only do they get caught in power lines, but, um, you know, my husband's an avid hunter and we're out in the desert quite a bit. And you wouldn't believe, you know, as much as we want to believe that they go up and just continue to go and go and go, it's not what happens. Um, they have to come down. And, do. and I've seen so many of them in, out in the desert. And, you know, and that, that's what Darren says. Yeah. He said, dispose of them properly. We find so many out in the desert all the time. And that also creates a hazard for the, the livestock. Um, livestock or the animals, the animals, or the wildlife. Exactly. They eat, you know, some of them eat, you know, the plants and things. And they, I've seen them tangled up in the bushes and the trees. And it is, it's quite messy. So definitely do not let them go. You, they're easily inflated. I know my balloons from my birthday that um, Anita picked up for me, they're still in my house deflating there. So, <laughs> um, But yes, definitely do not let them go. We don't want to lose power and we don't want to you know, make trash in our desert either. Or create in the possibility of injury for mm -hmm. something so senseless. Little exactly. says your happiness hurts others. That could be the case <laughs> with the balloons. It could, it could <laughs> please, definitely. Please do not uh, do that. And again today, there's a chance of showers most likely starting in a few minutes according to my weather app. But In about it, four minutes-ish? It, 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 it might not be the case, but there is a 51% a, a <laughs> chance of showers in the forecast sporadically throughout the day. So make sure if you do plan to be driving, you might want to check your windshield wipers too because that also creates an additional hazard if you don't have a clean line of sight. Yes, definitely. And you know what? Every time it starts to rain, we hear those uh, first responders having to go out. <gasps> Drive safely. Take your time. And like Lori said, she's seeing a lot more people in town, um, a lot more winter visitors. Take your time. Make sure you have enough time to get where you're going. If you're from the Yuma area and you like to use um, the back streets like I do, Remember, there is a speed limit back there. In residential, it is only 25. That's right. I moved to Yuma in February. And keep in mind, I was just a small town girl from a town of 10,000 people. And <laughs> at the time, we didn't even have a green turn arrow. <laughs> so to arrive in Yuma, I didn't know any of the back streets. It was, I believe, a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And February 19th. I only knew how to use 16th Street and 4th Avenue at, at first. <laughs> I got caught at that light, at that intersection, through five different cycles at, about 3.30 oh in the afternoon. I sat there crying because I just wasn't used to that. Yeah. And am I ever going to get to see my honey because I was moving here for yeah. him? And yeah, I finally made it. And without, um, didn't take too much time for him to say, these are some additional roads you might be able to use to yes. get to those destinations. Uh, and so. I, you know what? Even when they were um, redoing uh, 4th Avenue and 16th at Center Point right there, I use my back ways to get everywhere. Even now, I use them to, like that new roundabout, that fancy new roundabout over there on Gis. I use it all the time because it's a, it's a kind of goes, puts you in an area where you go around all that traffic from mm -hmm. 16th and you can That's still right. get to your location in a decent time. So. That's right. But again, practice patience. I know people exactly. get very frustrated, especially if they need to get to an appointment. Maybe they didn't give themselves a few extra minutes. Mm -hmm. So let's try and plan ahead and do that because it's not worth putting yourself at risk or someone else. I've seen quite a bit of craziness the last couple of days. People changing lanes right in the middle of an intersection, which is not legal. Uh, lack of turn signals. Pulling um, out and stopping traffic oh, just to get across the, the roadway, uh, yeah. that, that's not legal. No, it, it's, it's not. There's a few things that are, that are going on that are probably not safe. But do your part, drive defensively, mm -hmm. and make sure you are following the rules too. And put those phones down, yes, people. Yes, definitely, definitely. All right. Don't forget, text that keyword comedy to 928-343-0993 by noon today. And we will select one winner to win this pair of tickets to the Saguaro Foundation's Benefit Comedy Night that is coming up. Yes. All right, big Valentine plans? 
Not at all. No, not no, not doing anything. Like you know, like we said before, it's it's the middle of the week and it's kind of hard. And it, we have a, a lot of big weekends coming up, so we, why not save the money for when we do all those things? That's right. We would like said Jeff's birthday was Friday. We kind of did a double birthday and Valentine's Day celebration and just a, a fun fun little staycation here in town that was only. Mm, Minutely inconvenienced by a smoke alarm, <laughs> uh, low battery, but the, the facility, the uh, hotel we were staying at, wonderful, wonderful people, and they took care of that. The customer service was great. So. You know, there's a lot of awesome um, hotels in, uh, here in the Yuma area, and I like the idea of staycation. Even though you're not, st just a little break from home makes you feel like you're out of town. It does. It, it, it was nice <laughs> to get away. It's today in Yuma. Coming up tomorrow, we'll have Dale Krieger with the Masonic Barbecue, and our Miss Yuma County, Miss City of Yuma, and the Miss Outstanding Teens will both be in the studio, plus WTF Anita popping over to Thursday to announce that <laughs> giveaway and share her inspirational message for the day. We will see everyone tomorrow coming up on Z93. Next, we have the Bob and Sherry Show. And then on Outlaw Country, it's AP News at the top of the hour. Maybe Rainfall also at the top of the hour. And then your favorite classic country music. You got about 30 seconds. Um, I'm hoping. KCYK Yuma and KLJZ Yuma. I'm holding her to that. Don't leave. We have to do our selfie, yeah, but I have to flip yeah. a switch. Bye, everyone. <laughs> I was waiting. She always says bye. <laughs> bye. See you tomorrow. Have a Have safe a good Valentine's. and blessed Valentine's Day. Go show your love.